Um, let me ask you a question. Is your attorney's integrity uh, affect um, the outcome of your case? My answer is absolutely yes. Now, for a very uh, obvious scenario, okay, uh, for the obvious reason, if you hire an attorney with integrity, most likely uh, he will do the right thing for you in your case, um, and most likely that he will uh, look out for your interest, uh, zealously advocate your position, and most importantly, the chances for you to be taken advantage of by your attorney is greatly reduced. So those are um, the obvious reasons. And there is one uh, not so obvious uh, that I would like to get a little bit into, uh, into it, okay? That is, if your attorney is using gamesmanship as part of the litigation strategy, that's something that you need to watch out for. What do I mean? Well, let me tell you, this morning I went to Torrance Courthouse um, and we, we successfully defended um, plaintiff's um, request for a receivership for the partnership that is in dispute. Okay. At the end of the hearing, judge made the comment that plaintiff's attorney is very obvious she is playing games by filing multiple lawsuits against pretty much the same defendants with a, you know, about the same type of claims in different court. And apparently that she is trying to uh, circumvent the staying order that was issued uh, at a court uh, uh, where um, the other two cases are located. Okay, so she kind of want to uh, run around and to try to avoid the state order and file by filing a different lawsuit with a different court. Now, um, for attorneys, okay, we have this litigation playbook. It's called officially it's called California Code of Civil Procedures. Okay, that particular code set a boundary of what attorneys can or cannot do when they are litigating a case. Within that boundary, um, you know, the attorneys can argue, um, you know, whether the, the rules apply for uh, his or her client or not, okay? And why uh, should the judge uh, look at the code differently within that boundary? Once the attorney travels out of that boundary, his credibility starts to diminish. And if he's like way outside of the boundary, you know, that attorney is pretty much bullshitting the court and to himself and out of counsel. It's just not believable anymore once uh, they start doing that. Now, um, the other reason is, um, you know, your attorney is really an extension of you in the case. Contrary to what other people believe that the attorney's is really, uh, um, you know, I mean, even though they are advocating on your behalf, but it's really, they are the extension of you. What do I mean by that? Well, because 90% of the time, that attorney will need to speak on your behalf. And um, if, what, you know, so whatever they believe will affect how they feel and that cause them to say, you know, the right thing or wrong thing or cause them to do uh, a different action, okay? So if, if they have this, if they're not being upfront, for example, maybe they will say something differently. Maybe they will do something that is not congruent with what they say or what they think. And that congruency is very important because that affects the credibility of the attorney and ultimately you. So, um, now, that is very important, especially at the time of the trial, okay? Um, you are asking the 12 jurors, a total stranger to you, they, you are asking them to do justice for your case. And you are asking them to 
um, you know, take away their time from their work, from their family, uh, just sit in your case and listen to you. And it is my firm belief that um, the attorney's credibility during the time of trial will affect their decision-making process. Now, uh, most attorney, uh, most jurors, um, they, in my experience, they all want to do the right thing, even though they, you know, it is a distraction and inconvenient for them. They want to do the right thing, serving as a jurors. Um, so, in a situation where there is an issue that is on the borderline, they don't know which way they're going to fall. Okay, and that's a time I believe the attorney's credibility will affect their decision-making process. So I think it is important and it should be um, the question or criteria you look for when you're interviewing an attorney. And um, next video, um, I will share with you some ideas um, during the interview process, make sure that um, you know, the attorney that you intend to file, uh, intend to hire, so sorry about that, intend to hire is aligned with your goals, uh, your, uh, your desire, and also your value. So, stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon.